सो गाइज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स एंड दैट इज गेम थ्योरी हेलो एवरी वन अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून हाउ आर यू ऑल सो गाइज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स एंड दैट इज गेम थ्योरी इफ वी टॉक about the relevance of this topic so in the market structure where we have got different sort of firms there this theory which is game theory it plays a very vital role and if we talk about the syllabus of upsc economics optional here also several times the questions have been asked from the game theory so the topic is very interesting and i told you its relevance also so let's get started and see what's there in this topic okay so see the concept of game theory it can be applied at many places okay i will tell you what all the places are this was given by john von neumann and oscar in <clears throat> reference or in the form of mathematics it was actually given in a mathematical form okay by John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern the year was 1944 okay now what this game theory says is that yeah see now there are several components of game theory but before proceeding to the components of game theory let us understand what the game theory actually talks about see this game theory talks about two firms Hmm? which will be referred as players here if we are talking in reference to economical market mo model okay and if we are talking in reference to war let us say two countries are in war there also this game theory can be applied right so country 1 country 2 or if we are talking in terms of game team 1 team 2 right so it can be applied at several places yes or no okay and in all the places the concept of game theory will remain the same we are here going to discuss it in the economic form fine so here the game theory has certain components in it the first component is players so as i told you players can be form 1 form 2 form a form b whatever you want to call or two countries or two teams okay or two friends right whatever the scenario is what player does here is player makes a strategy what type of strategy suppose there are two firms a and b so firm a will make the strategy to make more profit or to defeat firm b yes or no that's what a is interested in right if there are two countries that are in war so country 1 or country a will make the strategy to defeat country b right and so on so players who will make the strategies or who will form strategies second component is obviously your strategies right the strategies made by player a and player b and these players can be firms countries whatever now strategies can be subdivided into two parts pure strategy and mixed strategy now pay attention to this when i say pure strategy so see guys this type of strategy can be applied when one firm knows the strategy of another firm right when rival firm knows the strategy of its rival suppose we have got two firms firm a and firm b okay and firm a is well aware of the strategy of firm b then the strategy that a will make for itself that will be known as or it can be categorized as pure strategy okay so when firm a knows all the moves of firm b so what a is going to do a is going to plan accordingly and it is going to act accordingly for example if firm b reduces its price so the same thing will be done by firm a also firm a will also reduce its price yes or no yeah if firm b increases its output 
So firm A is also going to increase its output. So in accordance to the strategy or moves of firm B, firm A is going to make its moves, right? So the necessary component is that the strategy of rival is known, then only pure strategy can be formed, fine? Next type of strategy is mixed strategy. What happens in mis mixed strategy? See guys, here firms are not aware hmm, or players are not aware of the strategy of their rival, right? In case of firms, firm A is not aware of the strategy of firm B. Hmm? A player 1 is not aware of the strategy of player 2. So when they are not aware of the strategy of their rivals, then the moves they will make, then the strategy they will form, that strategy will be of mixed form. That means, for example, firm A is observing increase in the profit of firm B. So now, Firm A is not sure that what move Firm B took in order to increase its profit. So, Firm B is going to act in undefined way. It will follow several steps. For example, Firm A can reduce its prices, right, in order to increase its market share. Yeah, it is not definite about the strategy of Firm B. Clear? So, these two types of strategies can be there pure strategy and mixed strategy and both have a key component what are that what is that the key component for planned strategy or pure strategy is that when one firm or one player is aware of the strategy of another player and for mixed when one player is unaware of the strategy of another player clear okay let's proceed Another component is payoff. Another component of our game theory is payoff. See as the name suggests, players are going to make strategies, yes or no, to counter each other, right? So the return they get, the return they get for making these strategies is known as payoff. Here, one thing has to be considered and it has to be kept in mind that payoff can both be profit as well as loss, right? Your payoff can be profit or loss. So loss is also the part of payoff. Yeah, it's not going to be the case that firm is always going to make profit. No, it can make loss as well. Yeah, in case of war, it can be victory or defeat. Yeah, right. So defeat is also considered as payoff. It is negative, I know, but it is also the part of payoff. Why? Because you have or firm has or country has obtained this loss or defeat after making its move, after forming these strategies. Okay. So this is also the very much part of our payoff. Clear? Okay. <clears throat> Fine. Now see, Newman and Oscar, they gave a very important concept and that concept is zero sum gain. What is the meaning of zero sum gain? See the meaning is that if we have got two firms, let us say the name of firm is uh, firm A and firm B, fine. So we have got two firms, firm A and firm B, okay. So if firm A is making a profit, let us say profit of firm A is 6 crores. Hmm. So see, when there are two firms and A is making profit, so profit of one firm will be loss for another firm, yes or no? So if I say A is making profit, I am putting a plus sign, A is making a profit of 6 crore, that means simultaneously B is making a loss of 6 crore, yes or no? This thing is going to become more clear if we consider two countries at war, yes? Let us say Russia and Ukraine, hmm? a very relevant topic nowadays, okay. So if I say Russia and Ukraine and I am saying it on obnoxious, not on obnoxious or certain decided way, I am just taking an example to make the things clear or let us say country A and country B, fine, let us avoid the names. So if country A wins the battle, 
or war is between country A and country B. So if one country is winning, then obviously another country is losing. Yes or no? So if A has won the war, that means B has lost it, right? So coming back to the example of firms. So if firm A is making a profit of 6 crore, that means firm B is making a loss of 6 crore. So if I add this, if I add the total payoff, so see plus 6 minus 6, what will I get? I will get a 0. I will get a 0. That's what the name is. Zero sum gain. Because once profit or once victory is loss for another or defeat for another. Clear? Okay. Now this concept of zero sum gain is emphasized or it is used in the game theory. How? We will see. It is used by the principle of mini max and max mini. So what is this principle? So to understand this principle in a better way, I have taken a random example. Okay. And let us say we have got, I am using the term player here to generalize it. But we are talking about firms, fine. So player A means firm A and player B means firm B, fine. Okay guys, now see, this column is representing strategies that can be used by or employed by firm A. Namely, three strategies A1, A2, and A3. Okay, fine. And this row, horizontal is row, this row is representing player B's, player B's strategy. And I said, let it be B1 and B2. See, guys, it is not necessary that if one player is employing three strategies, then another player is also obliged to employ three strategies. No, not at all. It can even employ four strategies or two strategies. It's not necessary that number of strategies should be equal. Okay. So here I have taken just for the sake of explaining three strategies for player A and two strategies for player B. Okay. Is this much clear? Fine. Now let us say, let me explain it to you. Let us say our player A uses A1 strategy. Right. Yes or no? Player A <coughs> uses A1 strategy and or firm A uses A1 strategy. Now see, since I am talking in respect of firms, let us say this: these are the amount mentioned in crores. Fine. CR. All these are in CR because we are talking about firms. So if player A uses A1 strategy, then he will make profit of 9 CR. Yes or no? Hmm? Now, player B has got two options. What are those? B1 option and B2 option. Okay. See, if firm A is making profit, then that profit is going to be loss for player B or firm B. Right? As I have just told you, zero sum gain. So, if Player A by using A1 strategy is making profit of 9 CR. That means player B is making loss of 9 CR. Yes or no? Right. And I told you player B has got two strategies B1 and B2. So player B can choose between B1 and B2 for this A1 strategy. If player B uses B1 strategy, then player B will suffer the loss of 9 CR. Okay. And if player B uses B2 strategy, it will suffer the loss of 2 CR. So what will player B do? It will try to minimize its loss. Yes or no? Or you can say it will try to minimize the profit of player A. So what will it choose? It will choose minimum of 2 and the minimum of 2 is 2 CR. Got it or not? Right? Now, see I am just be relaxed and understand it. It is very interesting. Okay. I am again going to repeat for A2 strategy. So the things will become more clear. Okay. Now see 
If player A uses A2 strategy, it will make the profit of 8 CR. Now profit of 8 CR for player A is loss of 8 CR for player B, right? So player B again has got two options, B1 and B2. It can employ either the strategy B1 or the strategy B2. If player B employs the strategy B1, it will suffer the loss of 8 CR. If it employs the strategy B2, it will suffer the loss of 5 CR. So what will player B do? It will try to minimize its loss or it will try to minimize the profit of player A. Thereby, it will choose 5 CR. See, I have made the column minimum of A. Yeah. Now if player A avails to strategy A3, then it can make the profit of 5 CR. So again, B has got two options, B1 and B2. What will B do? If B chooses B1, it will make loss of 5 CR. If it chooses B2, it will make loss of 4 CR. So what will B do? B will try to minimize its loss and it will choose the strategy B2. Is this much clear to us? Right? So this is the column of minimum of A. Yeah. So now see. Player A has got three options available to it. If it chooses A1 strategy, it will make the profit of 2CR. If it chooses A2 strategy, it will make profit of 5CR. If it chooses A3 strategy, it will make profit of 4CR. So what will A do? A is going to try to make maximum profit, it will try to maximize its profit. So it is going to choose this is strategy, right or wrong? Yeah, it will choose this is strategy. That is, it will make 5 CR. Clear? Yes or no? So what are we going to call it? We call it, since A is choosing this option, we will call it, and this is what? Maximum profit for A, we are going to call it max mini. Why max mini? Because it is maximum out of minimum available. Out of minimum options available, this is the maximum option A can opt for. So this is referred as max mini. Clear? Okay. Now, let us talk about another mode. Okay. See, if B chooses B1 strategy, if B chooses B1 strategy, then A1 has got three options. Understand? If player B is choosing this strategy B1, look at this column, 985, right? So player A has got three options, 9CR, 8CR and 5CR, yes or no, right? If player A, now what is the main motive of player A? It wants B to suffer maximum loss, yes or no? So. Player A can choose a strategy A1, A2 or A3 for the choice B1 of player B. Okay? If player A chooses A1 strategy, player B will suffer the loss of 9CR. If player A uses A2 strategy, player B will suffer the loss of 8CR. If player A chooses A3 strategy, player B will suffer the loss of 5CR. Player A wants to maximize the loss of player B. It is a rival firm. So it will choose A1 strategy. So here we have got maximum of B. It will come out as 9CR. Yes. <coughs> yes or no? Right. Excuse me. Now, if player B opts for B2 strategy, again player A has got three options. A1, A2 and A3 strategy to choose from. 
so if player a chooses a1 strategy it will suffer the loss of 2 cr if player a chooses a2 strategy it will suffer the loss of 5 cr if player a chooses a3 strategy b will suffer the loss of pardon me i'll repeat it if player a chooses a1 strategy b will suffer the loss of 2 cr if player a uses a2 strategy b will suffer the loss of 5 CR. If player A uses A3 strategy, B will suffer the loss of 4 CR. So, again player A tries to maximize the loss of player B, thereby chooses A2 strategy and loss of B is 5 CR. Yes or no? Right. Now, B has got two options available, B1 and B2. If player B chooses B1 option, it will suffer the loss of 9 CR and if player B chooses B2 option, it will suffer the loss of 5 CR. So again, player B will try to minimize its loss, so it will choose 5 CR, right? So what is 5 CR? It is mini max, minimum of the maximum losses mini max minimum of maximum losses so i'll write it it is mini max player b is going to choose minimum loss for itself of all the maximum losses available just as player a chose the maximum profit of all the minimum profits available clear okay now see guys this 5 cr which is mini max and 5 cr which is max mini if these two become equal that is when mini max becomes equal to max mini this is point is known as value of game this is value of game the point or amount where max mini is equal to mini max, okay? For example, in this case, it is 5 CR, okay? And this, for, for according to our example, it is 5 CR. And this is the equilibrium point of the firm. Okay? Equilibrium point, also known as saddle point in this case 5 cr is the equilibrium point or the saddle point understood so that was one aspect of game theory we have got other part also of game theory we will discuss it in some other video thank you i hope you understood the concept okay mm -hmm.